the pre-tribulation rapture or the mid-tribulation rapture, they say that Christ will come back only in mid-air. Now that is not supported by the Bible. It just, it doesn't say that. He, he said that Jesus will come down uh, to mid-air and the non-Christians don't see him. They say that the non-Christians don't see him. And the Christians will be taken up into air and they suddenly disappear. People don't see Jesus. They just see all the Christians disappear. This is what they say. But this is not a concept the Bible has talked about. The Bible doesn't talk about that. But why many people believe this? The pre-tribulation rapture when the Bible has not talked about that. Because people like to be taken away from the great tribulation. They, you know, if they are taken away, they don't have to face the great tribulation. They, they think that they find a way to explain the Bible so that they don't have to go through the great tribulation. But, you know, it doesn't change. The way we interpret the Bible doesn't change the fact. The fact is, there is only one time when Christians is rapture. When does it happen? We're going to find out from these three passages, actually from four passages, including this one. So when Jesus comes down, and there will be a shout and voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise from the dead, then the Christians who are alive will be caught up, raptured to Jesus, and will be always with the Lord. Okay, so this is the time when Jesus comes back. And Philippians 3.20 says that we also, now this also includes Paul. Again, he used we. We also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that is, that it may be conformed to his glorious body. That Paul said that we eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform, who will change our lowly body, our humble body, that it will be conformed to His glorious body, that our body will become glorious like Jesus, conformed to His glorious body, to be conformed to be like His glorious body. So when Jesus comes back, we'll be like, our body will be changed to become like Jesus' body. And 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 says that we'll always be with the Lord at that time. Then, so then we are with the Lord, then with the Lord, then we'll be also conformed to His glorious body. Now see, I'm showing you this from these two verses. It says that when we wait for the Savior, when He comes back, we'll be transformed, our body will be transformed to be like His glorious body. And here, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 says that we will always be with the Lord. So this fulfill this Philippians passage that we will be with the Lord. When we will be with the Lord, then we will be conformed, changed to His glorious body. Then we will be changed to His glori glorious body. And this is saying the same thing as 1st Corinthians chapter 15. 1st Corinthians chapter 15 that we will be changed to be immortal and incorruptible. Incorruptible and immortal. That we cannot die anymore. That means we are like Christ. So this will be the same time that happened. That Christian will be changed to become incorruptible and immortal that will be changed to become like Christ. So that means the rapture happens at the same time as 1 Corinthians chapter 15 when it's fulfilled. Now I want to say this, all these four passages talk about Paul. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1 on talk about our gathering to him. Paul gathered to Jesus when Jesus come back to destroy the Antichrist. So that is a time when Paul will be gathered to Jesus. When Jesus comes back to destroy the Antichrist, that is after the Great Tribulation, because during the Great Tribulation, the Antichrist will be active. And the time when he's destroyed is the end of the Great Tribulation. 
And then 1 Corinthians chapter 15 also talk about we is Paul. Paul says that he will be the dead Christians will be raised from the dead and then the live Christians will be also transformed together with the dead Christians and become immortal and incorruptible and death is swallow up and death is swallow up that means it's after the great tribulation because during the great tribulation Christians still die and in first second Thessalonians chapter 2 is when Jesus will come back to destroy the Antichrist that is also after the uh, the, uh, the great tribulation so Paul will be gathered to Jesus after the great tribulation when Jesus comes back to destroy the Antichrist and Paul will be raised from the dead and changed to be incorruptible when death is swallowed up and death is swallowed up when after the great tribulation Christians don't die anymore and here we, including Paul also, uh, the Christians will be raised from the dead and then will be caught up. Now Paul can only be raised from the dead and transformed and kept and raptured only one time. Paul will not be transformed and then die again and rise from the dead again. No, he can only rise from the dead one time and changed and then uh, rapture up to heaven only one time and so this three verses all talk about Paul rising from the dead now it doesn't talk about that because he thought he won't die so he said he's among those who are living so the Christians will rise from the dead and he will be changed and rapture so all these three passages talk about this passage talk about his gather to Jesus after Christ comes back to destroy the Antichrist and the Antichrist is destroyed after the Great Tribulation and then here Paul will be transformed when death is swallowed up in victory and during the Great Tribulation Christians will still be killed therefore if there is no more death for Christians that is after the Great Tribulation and this third verse talk about that Paul will be raptured and he you know that first there's a resurrection the dead Christians will be re resurrected and then together with those who are alive will be raptured together to Jesus and will be with Jesus forever so all these three verses Paul can only rise from the dead once can only be changed once can only be raised uh, rapture once so all these three happen at the same time and it's after the great tribulation because because it is after Christ comes back to destroy the Antichrist is after death is swallowed up in victory that is after the great tribulation when there is no more death so the rapture happens after the great tribulation when there is no more death when the antichrist is destroyed by Jesus Christ so it's very very clear from the three passages now here I put the three passages side by side that in 1st Corinthians chapter 15 verse 52 on in the last trumpet that the Christians will raise the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed and this corruptible must put on incorruption and the mortal must put on immortality and then this is fulfilled death is swallowed up in victory and first Thessalonians chapter 4 talk about the rapture that Jesus would descend from heaven and then uh, there is a shout and the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise so that there is a resurrection and then the those who arise will be raptured. So here talk about resurrection and rapture. And here talk about uh, transformation. Uh, that the body is changed. And second Thessalonians talk about being gathered. Paul and their Christians being gathered. So it's also that means the same thing as meeting Jesus. 
being gathered to Jesus, meeting Jesus. When would this happen? It's after uh, Jesus comes back to destroy the Antichrist. So it's all very clear that we'll be raptured, we'll be Christians, will be raised from the dead and transformed, and then rapture to Jesus after the Great Tribulation, after Jesus come back to destroy the Antichrist. And when there is no more death, death is swallowed up. So it's very clear from these passages that the rapture doesn't happen before the Great Tribulation. But many people like to believe that it, Christians will be raptured uh, before the Great Tribulation. They like to believe that. They like to believe that it doesn't make it come true. We have to study the Bible. And then we put together Matthew 24. Here it talks about that um, that there will be a great tribulation that has never been uh, since the beginning of the world nor ever will be. And if meet immediately after the tribulation, so again it's after the great tribulation, then uh, there will be the signs in heaven and then the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming. So here, after the Great Tribulation, all the people of the world will see Jesus. Now, as we saw earlier, that these three passages actually are fulfilled when Jesus comes back after the Great Tribulation because death is swallowed up and the Antichrist is destroyed. So it's after the Great Tribulation. So after the Great Tribulation, that Jesus will come back, that means not only the Christians are raised from the dead, the non-Christians are also raised from the dead and they will be judged and punished. So they will mourn, they will cry. So it's the same time as the other three passages that Jesus will come back after the Great Tribulation. So the time is very clear. It's after the Great Tribulation, Jesus will come back. At that time, the Christians will be raised from the dead and transformed. At the same time, the, all the non-Christians will also see Jesus comes back. And then they were afraid. They were crying. And then the Son of Man coming on the cloud, clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And He will send His angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Another mention of trumpet. So in these few messages, there are three times that trumpet is mentioned. So it should be also the last trumpet. And they will gather together his elect. So again, it's gathered together. As Paul said that they were gathering together to Jesus. That here again is gathering the elect from the four winds, from the ends of heaven to the other. And then for his, as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So at that time, it's like the time of the flood, the great flood, that only the eight people in the ark were saved and all the other people were killed it's just like the same thing that all these non-Christians they have to face judgment and then verse 40 at that time then two men will be in the field one will be taken and the other left behind so this one is the one that is not rapture so rapture is a, not a way of escaping punishment it's a way of separating the sheep and the goats the Christians are separated and taken to be with Jesus and the non-Christians are left behind. So the right, the people who are on the right hand side are also up in heaven by the feet of Jesus, on the right hand side of Jesus. And the non-Christians are down below on the left side of Jesus. So that rapture is really for the separation of the Christians and the non-Christian. It's not a way of escape. The Bible never says that that's a way of escape from the great tribulation. So then the, uh, so this, there are people who are taken 
to Jesus are some people who are left behind. Okay, so all these verses uh, agree that it's. Let me briefly repeat again so that we can remember and remember these Bible verses. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52 on, it talks about that in the last trumpet time that um, the Christians will be changed. The dead will be raised, incorruptible, and then those who are alive. So there is a resurrection and a transformation and no more death. And death happens during the Great Tribulation. So no more death, that means it's after the Great Tribulation. And then First Thessalonians talk about that the dead in Christ will rise first. And then, and then the Christians who are alive together will be caught up, will be raptured. So this is the time when there is uh, the transformation. Because uh, we look at this passage, Philippians 3.20, when we wait for the Savior, when He comes back, we'll be transformed to be conformed to His glorious body. So when we see Jesus, we'll be, we'll be like Jesus. So in First Thessalonians, we'll be raptured and to be with Jesus. That means we'll also be transformed to be like Jesus. So there will be the resurrection and the transformation. And First Corinthians will be resurrection and transformation. And First Thessalonians also resurrection and transformation. And both passages include Paul. So Paul used the word we. And Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians chapter two talks about that Paul will be gathered, our gathering together to him. It will be after the falling away and after the sun, uh, uh, sun of prediction, sun of damnation. The Antichrist is destroyed by the Antichrist, and the Antichrist is destroyed after the Great Tribulation. So here, this passage talk about that uh, the the uh, Christians will be gathered together, and it will be after the Great Tribulation when Antichrist will be destroyed. And Paul can only be changed, raised from the dead and changed, raised from the dead and changed and raptured, and also here gathered to Jesus once only. Paul will not be gathered to Jesus and then come back out of Jesus again. He will be gathered to Jesus and stay with Jesus, and that will be the rapture. So all three passages are fulfilled at the same time after the Great Tribulation, and this Matthew 24 also is after the Great Tribulation, also is after, you know, after the Great Tribulation that the, the, uh, also there's a trumpet and then the elect will be gathered together. The elect means a Christian, I mean a Jewish and Gentile Christians together. We are also called the elect. Okay, now, uh, Now uh, here I will respond to the argument of the pre and mid tribulation rapture uh, briefly. Some people say the church is not mentioned. The name church, uh, the description of church is not mentioned from Revelation chapter 6 to 18. But even though the church is not mentioned, the word saints are used many times. Saints are Christians. Jewish and Gentile Christians are also called saints. So the saints are present. So the Christians are present. So that doesn't prove that the Christians disappear. The proof from this is very vague. What I show from the passages I had uh, in uh, First and Second Thessalonians, First Corinthians, they are very clear passages to say that the church is not mentioned to prove that the church is already rapture is very vague uh, argument it's not a clear argument and at the same time there are mention of saints so it doesn't prove that the church doesn't exist second then as some people say well the Revel a book of revelation talk about christians sometimes in heaven and then on earth that means they are raptured and i want to say this the book of Revelation actually talk about the end time 
seven times I'm go just going to show two times because it takes too much time the sixth seal before the large crowd of people in heaven already talks about the end time the end of the world why because at that time all the people in the world cry out to the mountains and the rocks and say fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand now the great day of his wrath is singular day single day it's not the great tribulation it is the final day when Jesus comes back when all the non-Christians see him that's Matthew 24 talks about Jesus sign appear in heaven and all the tribes are mourning before that the non-Christian did not see Jesus they did not know that Jesus is coming back so it's at that time they saw that Jesus coming back and then they were afraid and they were asked the rocks and the mountain to fall on them to hide them from from the face of God the Father and the Son and uh, to avoid the wrath of the Lamb and uh, the wrath of God the Father and the wrath of the Lamb and uh, also the day of the wrath has already come so this already is the second coming of Jesus is the end of the world so the book of Revelation repeats itself many times it's looking at visions from different angles repeat many times so it it doesn't prove that you know it's actually it's after this chap chapter 6 it talks about the great uh, crowd in heaven great crowd of of Christians in heaven it doesn't prove that Christians are rapture uh, before the great tribulation and also the seventh trumpet already talks about that it's the end of the world the kingdom of this world has become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ the kingdom of the world has become God's kingdom he's a reign forever and ever the nations were angry and your wrath has come already come and the time of the dead that they should be judged Um, okay now this here uh, I, uh, I think I missed a word here Revelation eleven eighteen. let me find out here excuse me for a moment Okay, that, that, uh, that no word missed there. And the time of the dead, that they should be judged. So it's a time that the dead people will be judged. And then you should reward your servants and prophets and the saints and those who fear your name. So these are the, all the Christians, the servants, the prophets, the saints, and all those who fear your name, small and great, and shall destroy those who destroy the earth. Those who destroy the earth are the non-Christian, and God will destroy them. So it's a time of the dead that they should be judged. So it's a judgment of the dead. Now this is final judgment. This is the end of the world. Revelation 11, uh, 15, the seventh trumpet already talks about this, the end of the world. So the sixth, sixth seal and the seventh trumpet and then I'm not going to go through the other one because it's um, because uh, we are out of time now Christians need to prepare to face the great tribulation so how do we prepare first we need to be sure about our salvation okay I'm not going to go through that uh, now it's just briefly we need to experience the Holy Spirit so that in a time of difficulty we need to learn to pray so that we have strength anytime now when we pray much we can experience joy 
and power when we pray, when we have experienced the Holy Spirit, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit. So it's very important for the Christians to learn to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then when you pray, you feel the power of God. And then you can suffer. We can suffer the, the beating, uh, the imprisonment, and also the lack of food. And then God can provide us the food also or help us not to depend on food, maybe like Moses. He went up to, to Mount Sinai for 40 days and nights and he did not eat or drink. And God can provide for us when we pray. So it's very important for us to experience the Holy Spirit so that we have strength to face a difficult time so that we will not be affected by the beating. When they are beating us, we, 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 we stay in the presence of God, filled with the Holy Spirit and not be affected by them. And then we need to enter the strong presence of God by praying and our spirit, uh, for, with our spirit for a long time so we can experience miracles, guidance, provision, protection, and healing. So we need miracles to heal people, including healing the Christians who are hurt or healing non-Christians to bring them to Jesus and in guidance uh, that God will guide us in providing for our food and protect us and healing. And Christians have to learn to stand firm and not to be affected so that we won't fall away in the time of the great apostasy. So Christians need to stand firm anytime. So that's why it's very important for me to teach this uh, teaching so that all the Christians will stand firm. And number five, Christians need to care for each other and build up each other emotionally and spiritually, that we need to learn to stand firm and be able to help others spiritually, help other Christians spiritually. Number six, Christians have to put down their expectation of this world. For 10 kings will suddenly receive authority to become kings. Revelation 17, 12. 12. That means there is radical political changes over the whole world. So in the future, now, it could, we could enter this period anytime. There could be radical political changes. So we don't expect anything from the world because we know that the world will go away. We cannot expect good things from the world. And Christians need to learn to pay attention to and obey the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We need to learn to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit because He will guide us how to answer the people who persecute us and also guide us how to get protection and how to get food or not to depend on food and not to receive the seal of the beast or to worship the beast because these people they will not be saved this is in revelation 14 9 to 10 they will not be saved if they receive the seal and ever since even the beast received authority from god we learn to trust in god's provision and protection you know, the Bible says that the beast and uh, kings received authority from God. This is um, that, um, okay, in another passage, I, you know, I've, I've quoted the passage that, that the, the kings were obeying the work, you know, the, the plan of God, that they will give the power to the beast. That all this thing happened is under the authority of God. It's not God who caused them to sin. It's God who gives them the authority to do what they want to do. And then it will accomplish God's will. And then we need to have courage to do witnessing and are ready to die for Christ. Because we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And the pastor have the responsibility to train Christians to be victorious in the Great Tribulation. Pastor have to study the Bible to be sure about the time of the rapture. Firstly, secondly, we need to train Christians to be able to shepherd themselves and shepherd others. We need to train Christians to be able to shepherd others, not just the pastors shepherding them. They need to shepherd, learn to shepherd each other. And three, we need to train Christians to have a kingdom view of the world. We don't just think about a church. We think about other Christians, other churches. We want to help other churches. We want to be united to churches who follow Christ, to grow together, to have strength together, to face a great tribulation. We need to wake up other pastors and Christians to be ready for the great tribulation. Many pastors and many Christians are not ready. We need to wake them up. 
We need to learn to trust in God for the provision for our ministry now and in, in the Great Tribulation because at that time there's no more income, no more offering. We need to depend on God only. Okay, now there is one more point I want to Uh, there is there is one more point I want to say is that the seventh seal was it was Christ who can open the seven seals and then the seven trumpet seven thunder seven bowls were all initiated by initiated by angels that means the whole great tribulation period was initiated by God why does God initiate the great tribulation now some people say, wow, I can understand. Why does God want to bring the Great Tribulation? You know, the Bible doesn't give the reason. I think, I'm, I'm telling you from my thinking, from my analysis of the Bible, I think the reason is this. Because before the Great Tribulation, Christians can rely on, the, on money, can rely on their strength, can rely on other things. Christians don't rely on God totally. But in the Great Tribulation, we cannot rely on money anymore. We can only rely on God alone in the Great Tribulation because we cannot buy food. And we cannot have ordinary protection because the Antichrist is going to track down the Christians and kill the Christians. So we cannot depend on ordinary ways to protect ourselves and provide for us. So at that time, Christians can only do one thing, pray and listen to the guidance of the Holy Spirit for protection and for provision for food. So at that time, Christians would just rely on God. And that is a time when we totally rely on God and then God can do great things. Because now many Christians rely on themselves and rely on their money, then they don't have much strength from God. But when we only rely on God, we will have more strength, just like the early church when they were persecuted, they had more strength. So the Great Tribulation is a time of trial for the Christians. It's a time when the Christians rely on God only and their spiritual life will be raised to a high level. There are some who lose their salvation and we want to prevent that as much as possible. But there are some that is a time of trial and then they become stronger because they trust in God and they have more strength and there will be a great revival. And I believe that the great revival happens during the Great Tribulation. Great revival doesn't mean all the people in the street believe in Jesus, but it means that all the Christians are strong. And then when we pray for people, there will be miracles, there will be healing, there will be transformation and we'll be able to bring many people to Christ. So that's a time of great uh, revival and many people are saved and brought to Christ and the spiritual life are revived. It's a great work of God, a time of great work of God. That's why God, that, that's what I think that God brought the great tribulation. It's for the benefit of us so that we can experience greater power from God when we trust in God only. So I hope that you are not afraid of the great tribulation because that's a time when we rely on God and have strength. And then when we get used to being filled with the Holy Spirit. When we pray, we can experience His presence. And then even when they are beating us or putting us in prison, we won't, we, we will have strength and joy from the Lord that we can withstand the pain. And maybe God even take away the pain. So that's the time that we experience miracles, greater miracles than ever. Now for myself, I hope that I will be in the great tribulation. For myself, I hope that I will experience this great revival in the Great Tribulation. And I want to prepare myself and as many Christians and pastors as possible, that they are strong spiritually, that they can face the Great Tribulation and be able to strengthen another Christian. So I hope that you too will not be afraid of the Great Tribulation, but will stand firm and stand strong and glorify God and be revived now to prepare for the Great Tribulation so that at a time of Great Tribulation we will all be revived and we can strengthen more Christians and bring more people to Jesus Christ. And I think that is the purpose of the Great Tribulation, that God is in control of everything. So God bless you. I 
pray that you would really uh, understand we need to face the great tribulation so we need to stand firm we need to prepare ourselves spiritually <clears throat> we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit we need to learn to strengthen other Christians we need to learn to strengthen the church and build up other churches I mean we unite with churches that follow Christ that we pray together we strengthen each other and help any Christian we come across and encourage the pastors to understand that we need to face a great tribulation there are so many pastors who think that they will be raptured taken away before the great tribulation and they are not ready so I pray that you all understand this message the importance of this, of this message if you have any question you can ask me on face uh, on uh, Facebook or WhatsApp or you can go through the, uh, the pastor who, who, who knows me to connect with me and then I can answer your question and help you spiritually and I hope that you can face the great tribulation with courage and with strong spiritual life and strength okay let's pray together and you can stand up together to receive the power of the Holy Spirit dear Heavenly Father we praise you and thank you because your Almighty God everything is in your hand we know that there is no authority that doesn't come from you. All the authority of the Great Tribulation comes from you. It is you who allow all this to happen. And so we trust that you want to accomplish something great. You want to revive the Christians so that they rely on you only. They don't rely on money or on their strength anymore, but rely on God only. Lord, give us strength. Help us to be prepared for the Great Tribulation. Help us to be strong in you. Help us to be able to strengthen other Christians, to build up other Christians' spiritual life. Give us wisdom. Give us the spiritual strength from you. And give us the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We worship you. And we can serve you joyfully. We serve you without burdens. We can serve you with no burdens because you take care of everything for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God be with you. Okay, God be with you. If you have any question, please ask me. And uh, may God keep your faith forever and ever. And uh, and may God help you to uh, 